أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم بده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولقد اتينا موسى تسع ايات بينات فاسال بني اسرائيل اذ جاءهم فقال له فرعون اني لا اظنك يا فرعون يا موسى مسحورا قال لقد علمت ما انزل هؤلاء الا رب السماوات والارض بصائر واني لا اظنك يا فرعون مسبورا صدق الله العظيم now this is the last section of surah bani israil and there is a similarity between the first section of surah bani israil which we read last night and this last section in the first section as we saw last night there was a mention of the history of bani israel twice they reached zenith power glory twice they were persecuted and chastised by allah subhanahu wa taala now that began with the exodus when the bani israel had left egypt here what happened before that in egypt while hazrat musa alayhi salatu wassalam was sent as a messenger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards firaun and his chieftains and as a savior for the bani israel so now the mention is of that part of that history wa laqad atayna musa tis ayatin bayyanatin and we gave moses nine signs which were very clear nine miracles first of all two miracles that were given to him in the first instance one was that his staff turned into serpent otherwise other was that when he took out his hand it was bright as sun without any disease but afterwards the famine the sea the storm locusts lice frogs and rain of blood these were the signs which were shown as a proof that not Musa alayhi salatu wassalam was the messenger of Allah but Firaun rejected all of them wal qad atayna Musa tis ayatin bayyanatin fasal bani israil is jahu and we had given Moses alayhi salatu wassalam nine clear signs now you can ask bani israil the children of israil what happened when Moses came to them fa qala lahu Firaun but Firaun said to him to Musa alayhi salatu wassalam inni la azunnuka ya musa masfura i think moses you have been bewitched some magic has overtaken you the same thing which was being said of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam at makka the same thing was said about musa alaihi salatu wassalam in egypt qala laqad alimta now musa alaihi salatu wassalam he gave him the answer in the same coin قال لقد علمت ما انزل هؤلاء الا رب السماوات والارض بصائر you very well know that all these signs which i have shown you were not sent down except by allah subhanahu wa taala who is the lord of all the heavens and the earth to open your eyes wainni la azunnuka ya firaun masbura and i think o oh firaun you are going to be doomed and destroyed farada yastafizhu min al ard Now Pharaoh tried to erase them from the land, to kill them all. Fagarak Naho. Instead of the Bani Israel being killed, we drowned him. Fagarak Naho, Mam Mahu Jamia, or all of his armies and chieftains, they were all drowned in the sea. Fakulna min badhi li Bani Israel, and then we said to Bani Israel, Uskunulard, now you live in this world. 
فیضا جا وعد الاخرت جینا بکم لفیفا وین دی پرومس اف دی اخرہ ول کم ٹو پاس دین وی شیل برنگ یو بیک رولڈ اپ ایز اے کراؤڈ Now what does this mean? This means, you know, when this world will come to an end and all human beings will have to go to the, the plane of Hashr, which we call, where they will be accounted for, for their deeds and, and whatever they said. So that is all people, all humanity will be brought over there. But here, particularly for Bani Israel, what does it mean? I think so. that Bani Israel have been in the condition of diaspora for nearly 2,000 years. In the year 70, I told you yesterday, in the year 70, Titus, the Roman general, he conquered to suppress the rebellion of the Jews in Jerusalem. He massacred 133,000 people in one day, Jews. Also took 63,000 as captives and slaves and demolished the second temple which was built in the Bekka, during the Meccabi kingdom and turned them out, the Bani Israel, go away from Jerusalem and go away from Palestine. That was the beginning of their diaspora. They went to Europe, they went to Russia, they went to Asia, they went to, to Africa and so on and so forth. And they went to the Asian countries. So this diaspora came to an end when? In this century, in the year 1917. Well, you know, the Britishers, they allowed them because Palestine was under their mandate. So they allowed the Jews, you can come back in Palestine and you can settle over here. You can buy houses, property, fields, etc., etc. 1917, starting from the year 70 A.D., to 1917, what it, does it come to? 1800 and something. For this long period, they were not able to enter into Palestine. But now they are being gathered there, because now their final end will come. When there is going to be a big confrontation, the surah, the next surah, surah Kahf, will begin with it. The Al-Malhamatul Uzma, the biggest war of the, of the history of the world. And you know, there will be massacres. And this Ummah, Yahud, they will be finished, exterminated. Like the old nations to whom the messengers of Allah were sent. The nation of Nu and Hud and Saleh, etc. The same thing will happen to them at the hands of Jesus, alayhi salatu wasalam, who is going to return back. He was raised alive to the heavens and he will descend down. So this is why now the views are being, you know, collected in one land so that their greater Israel becomes their greater graveyard. If they have spread over the whole of the world, you know, then the chastisement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have to be universal. No, you gather them, come here, gather here, so that in one strike you are all finished. This is going to happen, inshallah. فَبِالْحَقِّ أَنزَلْنَاهُ وَبِالْحَقِّ نَزَلْ In the first section of this surah also, after mentioning the four periods of the history of Bani Israel, then there was the ayah, إِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ يَهْدِي لِلَّتِي هِيَ أَقْوَمْ وَيُمَشْرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجْرًا كَبِيرًا In the same way here also, after mentioning a part of the history of Bani Israel, now, وَبِالْحَقِّ أَنزَلْنَاهُ وَبِالْحَق With truth we have sent down this Qur'an. And it has come down the truth. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرًا وَنَزِيرًا And we have not sent you, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, but only as a giver of the glad tidings and as a warmer. قُلْ آمِنُوا وَقُرْآنًا فَرَقْنَاهُ لِتَقْرَاهُ وَلَا النَّاسِ عَلَىٰ بُقْسٍ وَنَزَّلْنَاهُ تَنْزِيلًا And this Qur'an we have sent down to you piecemeal, not whole of it at once, bit by bit. so that you may recite it to the people with intervals. And we have sent down it gradually. Say to them, O oh people, whether you believe in this Qur'an or you don't believe, 
those people to whom knowledge was given before this Quran. Izayutla alayhim, when this Quran is recited unto them, yakhilluna lilaskaan sujjada, they fall on their faces on the ground in prostration. Wa yakulun and they say, Subhana Rabbina in Kanabad Rabbina la mafula. Glory is for our Lord. And verily, the promise of our Lord had to be fulfilled. This was the promise. You know, in Deuteronomy, one of the books, five books of Bible, in 1818, chapter 18 and verse 18, there is the prophecy. I will raise from among their brothers a messenger like you, O Moses, and I will put my word in his mouth. And he will then say to them what I would like him to say. This is the prophecy according to which Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the people who had knowledge, the ulama, the knowledgeable people among Bani Israel, they knew it. So those people when they listened to Quran, they fell on the ground in prostration. And they said, Subhana Rabbina, in Kanabad Rabbina ala mafula. Glory be to our Lord, definitely. The promise of our Lord had to be fulfilled. وَيَخِرُّونَ لِلَسْقَانَ يَبْقُونَ وَيَسِيدُهُمْ خَشُوعًا And they fall down on their faces weeping. And this increasing, this increases in them the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is ayat of Sajda. So please make a Sajda. قُلِ دُوا اللَّهَ عَوِدُوا الرَّحْمَانِ Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O people, Call upon Allah or call upon Rahman. It makes no difference. Ayyam ma tad'u. Whomsoever you are calling. Falahul asma'ul husna. All the beautiful names are for him. There was a controversy in Makkah. Because they knew the name Allah. They used it. Quran has also adapted the word Allah. Yes. But Quran introduced other names of Allah also. And in the other names, most prominent is Rahman. It comes in the Quran many times, many times. 113 times in the ayah, Bismillah, Bismillah rahman rahim The Arabs used to say, who is this Rahman? We don't know. Allah we know. But who is this Rahman? So now Allah is saying, what does it make? What difference does it make? He is one. He is the creator. He is the Lord. He is the sustainer. He is one. All good names belong to him. So you call him by the name of Allah or you call him by the name of Rahman, it makes no difference. And when praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't make your voice loud. Also don't, don't keep it very low. Try to have something in between. Balance. وَقُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي لَمْ يَتَّخِذْ وَلَدَا And say, all praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This ayah is very important. It is in a way equal to Surah Al-Ikhlas. All the things which are included in four ayat of Surah Al-Ikhlas are here in one ayah. قُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ Number one, say, all praise belongs to Allah. الَّذِي لَمْ يَتَّخِذْ وَلَدَا who didn't take a son to him. Nam yalid walam yulad in Surah Al-Ikhlas. He didn't take a son to him. Walam yakul lahu sharikun fil mulk. And there has been no partner with him in sovereignty. He is the sovereign. The whole mulk. Sovereignty belongs to him and him alone. Sarvari zeba faqat us zate be ham taku hai. Hukmara hai ik wohi baki mutane azri. Walam yakul lahu waliyu min azul. And there has been no helper or friend for him. Because of any weakness, you have friends and you think a friend will come in some time of need, he will help me. And that, that is why you keep the friendship. And that is why you have to somehow and sometimes accept his wrong demand also. Well, he is my friend, I have to accept his, his thing, although it's wrong. But I have to accept he's my friend. Maybe tomorrow I need his help. There is no such friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah doesn't need any help. Allah is all-powerful. He has all ya. All the ahl iman the believers are all ya of Allah. But this is not due to any weakness. This is not because 
he needs some help wa kabbir ho takbira and magnify him with all the magnification now what is magnify make him great 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 not only say we we think saying allahu akbar it is takbir yes it is takbir but this is the beginning of takbir the end of takbir is you make allah supreme his command supreme he becomes the ruler his law is enforced his system that has been given that he has given in the form of dinul haq it becomes supreme then he will be great otherwise he will be great constitution of united states of america is greater than allah and supreme court is greater than allah and everything you know parliament senate congress they are greater than allah they can pass any law against the law of sharia they can pass so allah is not great he is great no doubt but you have to make him really great actually great when his greatness is established so this aya you know in five different ways it is praising allah subhanahu wa taala and this tawhid in a very comprehensive universe قل الحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبره تكبيرا magnify him make him great now we come to the next surah surah al kahf now please note these two surahs surah bani israil and surah kahf are a very beautiful example of a very beautiful pair of surahs number 1 they are absolutely equal in size 12 sections of surah to bani israil 12 sections of surah kahf ayat in bani israil 111 in kahf 110 only difference of one ayah then bani israil started with subhanallah subhanallazi asra bi abdihi laylan min al masjid al haram ila al masjid al aqsa This is starting. Alhamdulillah, he lazi anzal ala abdi hil kitab wa lam yajal lahu ibaja. This tasbih and tahmid they are joined together. According to a hadith, the Prophet said, "A tasbih ho nisful mizan." Wa alhamdulillah, it tam lauhu. You know the scale of the day of judgment. Half will be full by tasbih, and takbir will fill it. So tasbih and takbir. Surah Bani Israil starting with tasbih. سبحان الذي اسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام الى المسجد الاقصى ان سوره قاف الحمد لله next thing you know must note that the last ayah of surah bani israil is qul alhamdulillah and here the next surah is beginning alhamdulillah as if the command which was there in the last ayah here it's being it's, it's being actively and actually it is being obeyed here alhamdulillah so i told you that in the center of both these surahs there is the story of of iblis and adam the ayat in the beginning of the sixth section of this surah ayat in the beginning of the sixth section of bani israil wa isqulna lil malaika kasiru li adam wa fasjadu illa iblis so these are the similarities بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي انزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا All praise belongs to Allah who has sent down on his bondsman Abd. Here could be Rasul he, but Allah prefers the word Abd. This is higher level for Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam than Rasul. We think the sadat is higher than Abdiyat. No, no, no. In Abdiyat, you face your Lord. In the sala. you are facing the people to whom you are talking so actually abd is a higher status than risala abdiyat in the same way we found in surah bani israil subhan allazi asra bi abdihi laila min al masjid al haram ila al masjid al aqsa wa rasulihi alhamdulillah allazi anzala ala abdihi al kitab wa lam yajal lahu iwaja also in surah al furqan تبارك الذي نزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نصيرا so all praise belongs to allah subhanahu wa taala who has sent down on his bondsman on his servant muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam al kitab this book walam yaj'al lahu iwaja and he has placed no distortion in this book 
इट्स अ वेरी प्लेन बुक वेरी क्लियर बुक किताब उम मुबीन कई ये मन स्ट्रेट एब्सोल्युटली स्ट्रेट ले युंजरा बासन शनीदम मिल्ल दुन हो सो दैट ही वॉन ऑफ ए वेरी बिग वॉर विच विल कम फ्रॉम योर लॉर्ड नाउ बासा एंड बास हियर has been translated as a big punishment also but in quran we find when this word is used in as a plural basa they can be any type of type of turmoil hunger famine etc etc drought all these are basa but when it is singular bas heen al bas bas means war so actually the prophecies of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam regarding al malhamatul uzma a very big war which is going to be fought and we find this also in the christian tradition you might have heard armagedon armagedon is coming now the christians say it's coming it's very near and if you consult a dictionary about this word you will find a very big war which will be fought between the e the forces of evil and good before the end of this world this is the dictionary meaning of armagedon so in the revelations the last book of new testament is revelation of st john and in the prophecies of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam there is mention of a very big war so that he warns people of a very big war by yubashir al mu'minin and yubashir al mu'minin and he should give the glad tidings to the believers alladheena ya'maluna salihat who not only believe also do good deeds anna lahum ajran hasana for them will be a very beautiful very goodly reward ma kisina fihi abada and they will abide in it forever forever wa yunzir alladhina qalu takhadu Allahu walada and he should warn those people who have said that Allah has taken a son now this is the mention of christians you know who at this time are controlling this globe who are they christians and Jews are controlling the Christians but Christians are controlling the whole world but actually Christians you know they are the big powers this America Europe everything everywhere then you know in the east also in the philippines oh who christians and now temur divided and you know half of it is now in a roman catholic state country in africa christians they are not allowing the muslims in nigeria to establish the sharia law many thousand muslims were massacred why because they wanted to establish the law of sharia in the nigeria a muslim majority country but they don't let him do it so this is what is happening now and what is going to be there is a prophecy of the prophet armies from 80 countries christian countries will come and invade middle east and each under each you know flag there will be 12000 people so if you multiply by 12 the 80 80000 and 12080 what it comes to about a million people will be there and nearly one third of the million were there in the gulf war also now all this nato it is being harnessed afresh a new strengthened and expanded what for for whom there is no threat they say there is a threat from the muslim fundamentalists anyhow wa yunzil alladhina qalu takhadu Allahu walada and he should warn those who have said that Allah has taken for himself a son ma lahum bihi min ilm they don't have any knowledge of it wala li abaihim nor their their elder fathers four fathers had any knowledge taborat kalimatan takhruju min afwahihim very grievous is the word that is coming out of their mouths very insulting to allah subhanahu wa taala e yaquluna illa kadhiba they are not seeing except what is it is lie a big lie falan laka baqiun nafsak ala asabihim so muhammad may be that you kill yourself in grief over the consequences that are going to take place falalla ka baqir nafsaka ala asarihim the consequences of this you know dogma of trinity this accepting hazrat masih alayhi salatu wassalam as son of god 
So, begotten Son of God, begotten. So, actually, they say, He is the begotten, the only begotten Son of God. Now, the doom that is going to come to them, maybe that due to the grief, you may perish. If they don't come to believe in this, this Quran, we have made whatever is on this earth an adornment for it. These skyscrapers of Manhattan, these high-rise buildings, these big bridges, these highways, these gardens, these, you know, parks, what are they? They are like ornaments, just as a woman. She uses ornaments. This, this, these are the ornaments for this world, for this earth. Inna jalna maada lardya zina tullaha. It's an adornment for them. Le yablo ahum, le nablo ahum ayyuhum ahsanu amala. So that we should try and test them. Who among them are the doers of the good deeds? What does it mean? This world is very beautiful. Allah is the most beautiful. Now you love either this world or Allah. This is the test. If you love this world, you have failed. If you love Allah, live here. Use it. But don't love it. Live in this world. Use it. But don't love it. Your love should be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the crux of the matter. And we are definitely going to make all that is on it, on the earth, a barren soil. When this hour will come, asa, everything will perish. These skyscrapers, nothing. The whole earth will become a plain thing. Without any mountains. Mountains will also disappear. There will be la evaja, wala amta. No height, no depths. It will all be a single plain earth. And on that, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then will come down. And all the malaika will come down. And then, you know, the hell will be brought before their eyes. So all these things are going to happen. Now this surah has two stories. One of the people of Kahf, the people of Cave, that is in the beginning. Other is the story of Zul Karnain, that is near the end. Now, actually, these were the questions asked by the Quraysh of Makkah from Muhammad Sallallahu on the instigation of the Jews. Well, Jews sent them the message that we have come to know that a person amongst you, Muhammad, named Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is claiming to be a messenger of Allah, to be a prophet. Well, you ask him three questions. If you can answer them, then maybe he is a messenger. Who are the people of the cave? What was the story of the people of the cave? Who was Ul Karnan? What is the story? And what is spirit? What is Ruh? And the answer to the third question is given in Surah Bani Israel. They are asking you about Ruh. Tell them, Ruh is from the command of my Lord. And you have not been given from the knowledge, but a very little. So you can't understand. The reality of Ruh you can't understand. It's the, it's the command of Allah. But these two questions are answered here. First of all, this is Ashab al-Kahf. And from this is the name of this Surah, Surah al-Kahf. Do you think that the people of the cave and the inscription were among our very, very big signs? You may think that there is a very big sign. For us it is nothing. Some people remained alive but sleeping for 300 years. What happens? For a life it is nothing. But you think it is a very big sign. Now, the, what is the story? In the second century of Christian era, Roman Empire was pagan. 
worshipping idols, their mythology, gods and goddesses. And when Christianity was spreading in the Roman Empire, those who accepted the message of Jesus, they were persecuted badly. So in the days of Decius, which we call in Urdu Dakiyadus, Decius was the emperor of Rome in the second century. In his time, some youth, they accepted Christianity. And Christianity was the deer at that time. Masih was the messenger of Allah. And Muhammad has not had not as yet come, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it was the true deen of Allah. So they became, so to say, Muslims and Muwahids. But now they were brought to the king. And the king said, I give you seven days. Either you come back to your, the religion of your forefathers, or then you will be stoned to death. Now these people, when they went back, they thought, what can we do? So they consulted each other, let us go to some cave and stay there and see what Allah does. Left the city, gave there, and this happened in a city, Ephesus. Ephesus, yeah, Ephesus. And this was in the present-day Turkey. That was the Roman Empire. And it was in this country, this city, Ephesus. When they went in that cave, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them sleep. And they kept sleeping for 300 years. Now what happened during these 300 years? Constantine, the emperor of Rome, he accepted Christianity in the year 300 AD, in the beginning of the 4th century. Now the whole empire... Christian, the Roman Empire is Christian. Now when they got up in the 5th century, it was the day of the Emperor Theodosius. Now they got up and they thought, how much have we lived here? For how long had we stayed in this cave? Some said, maybe one day or a part of a day. The other said, oh, let's leave it. We are hungry, give this silver piece, coin, to someone. He should go and find some good food, clean, halal, so that we can take the food. When one that that person came in the, in the city and he presented his coin, well, there was, you know, a, people said, where did you get this coin? It is 300 old years for coin. How did you get it? Maybe you have some treasure. You have found a treasure. So there was, in this way, people came to know that this was the story. They are the people. Because about them, you know, when they had disappeared, their account was written on a tablet and put in the treasure by the, by the emperor. So that is why they are called Ashab al and of Rakim. Ashab al or Rakim, the inscription. So that was taken out from the treasure and they found they are the people. And they have been sleeping here in this cave for 300 long years. But then they went there back into the cave and then they died. And then the people now, because they are Christians now, so they, they decided that they will make a place of worship on that cave. So this is the story. And this story is found in Gibbon's book, Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. Story of seven sleepers. This Gibbon has written. Now I read the text of the Quran. Am hasibta anda ashab al kafir wa raqim kanu min ayatina ajaba. Do you think that this matter which happened with the people of cave and inscription, it is one of our very, our, our very great signs? Is awal fitiyat oil al kaf? When those youth came to the cave, talu, and they said, Rabbana, atina bil ladun karahma. O our Lord, give us from your own stores, mercy. Wahiyya lana min amdana rashada. And provide us for us rectitude in our affair. Salvation. Fadarabna ala azanihim fil kafir sanina adada. So we sealed up on their ears. For some, for, for some years. That is, they went to sleep. They went to sleep. Summa basna. Then we raised them up. 
لنعلم so that we know ay ul hisban ahsa li ma labisu amada which of the two parties has kept correct you know understanding of how long they had been there nahnu naqussu alayka dabahum bil haq now in these three ayat the whole crux of the matter has been given but the detail is now coming nahnu naqussu alayka dabahum bil haq oh muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we are going to narrate on you their story with truth innahum fitiyatun they were a few youths amanu bi rabbihim who believed in their lord in tawhid wazidnahum khuda and we increased them in guidance we gave them more guidance more guidance more yaqeen more taqwa wa rabatna ala qulubihim and we strengthened their hearts when they stood it means they stood in the court of the emperor faqalu rabbuna rabbus samawati wal ard and they said and proclaimed over there our lord is the lord of the heavens and the earth nan nadwa min dunihi ilahan we are not going to pray to any other than god except him laqad qulna idhan shatata if we say that it will be very exceedingly wrong thing ha ulai qaumun takhadu min dunihi alaha these people this of nation they have taken with allah subhanahu wa taala other gods also alongside the big god written by capital g god with capital g god is omnipotent omnipresent omniscient but with small letter g gods and goddesses thousands of them so they have adopted gods besides god how la qawmun takhadu min dunihi alaha law la yatuna alayhim bi sultan bayyin why don't they produce a clear proof thereof faman azlamu mim man iftara ala allah kaziba who is more wrong doing than the person who is forging lies against allah subhanahu wa taala why they tell to move home and now then they were given you know only 7 days make a decision either you leave this deen of tawhid come back to the mythology roman mythology or you will be stoned to death now they consulted each other why is it that to move home wa ya'budun illa allah now that you have left them and whom they are worshiping except allah fawu ilal kahf now let us go to some cave yanshur lakum rabbukum min rahmatihi your lord will spread for you the bedding of his mercy wa yuhayya lakum min amrikum mirfaqa and he will produce for you in your matters is wa tarasham sayza talat now what was the position of the cave its mouth was towards the opening was towards the north so when the sun rose from the east no direct sun was going into the cave in direct light just as we have the north light you know shells are made for big factories and mills etc so no sun should not go directly the rays of the sun but light should go indirectly wa tara shams idha tala tadawaru an kahfi at al yameen and you might have seen the sun when it rose inclined from their cave towards the right wa idha gharabat taqriduhum zat al shimal and when it set passed by them on the left wa hum fi fajwatin minhu and they were there in a broad place in the cave the mouth mouth or opening of the cave was small inside the cave was wide may yahdillahu wal muhtadi zalika min ayatillah this is from among the signs of allah subhanahu wa taala may yahdillahu wal muhtad whom so ever allah guides he is the only rightly guided person wa may yudlil and whom he sends astray falan tajida lahu waliya murshida you will not find for him anybody who is protector and who can direct him to the right path wa tahsabuhum ay qazam had you seen them in that, that, that position you would have thought that they are awake wa hum ruqud but they were actually asleep wa nuqallibuhum zat al yamin wa zat al shimal and we kept on turning them to the right to the left so that they should not have the bed sores you know if they are lying on their back continuously continuously so there will be sores so allah subhanahu wa taala is turning them from left to right right to left nuqallibuhum zat al yamin wa zat al shimal 
وقل بہم باسط ذرائع بالوسیط and along with them was their dog maybe a bull dog you know very you know, <coughs> frightening dog and it was sitting at the threshold of that cave extending its arms lam talata alayhim lawallayta minhum firaran wa lamuta malmulayta minhum roba if you would have passed by chance and glance you know you would have left their run away from there in fright and you must have been you know frightened to see this scene this big dog sitting in in the in the door you know although the door was also asleep the dog was also asleep or dead whatsoever wa kazalika basna and now we raised them up awoke them la yatasalu bainahum so they asked between themselves qala qailu minhum one of them said kam labistum how long have you been here قالوا لبسنا يوما وبعد يوم they said maybe one day how much a man sleeps one day or a part of a day يوما وبعد يوم قالوا ربكم اعلم بما لبستم then they said leave it your lord knows best how much period you have been here from asu ahadakum now send one of you be warikum hazihi with this piece of silver الى المدينه تو دي سيتي فل ينظر دن دي هي شود جو اند سي ايها ازكى طعاما ويتش از دي فود ويتش از بيور اند ويتش از كلين فل ياتيكم برزق منه اند دي شود برينج هي شود برينج سم فود سم بروفيجن فروم ويت فل يتلطف اند هي شود بيهيف كورتيسلي ولا يشرن بكم احدا هي شود نوت فال اوت وذ اني بدي يو نو دن دي ويل سي هو هي از اند وير ار هيز كومبانيونز so you know then we are here hiding la yushiranna bikum ahada now those who have opened the, this purane majid with them they should note this word fal yatalattaf this is the exact center of quran regarding the numbers of the alphabets not words alphabets even the alphabets have been counted in yatalattaf ta ta is belongs to the first half and lam belongs to the second half and here according to the number of the letters of quran this is exact half inna hum yadru alaykum if they prevail upon you yarjumukum they will stone you to death aw yuidukum fi billatihim or they will force you to go back to the their deen their religion walan tuflihu idan nabada and in that way you will never be able to prosper and succeed wa kazalika asarna alayhim in this way we disclose their matter to them to the people of the city liyalamu anna wa'da allah haqqun so that they come to know that the promise of allah is true wa inna saata la rayba fiha and as for the fixed hour of dooms day there's no doubt in it now if allah subhanahu wa taala can keep some people living for 300 long years can't he resurrect you from the dead so if this became an argument because at that time there was an argument going on between people how people will be resurrected how is it possible how can we understand it so now this sign of allah subhanahu wa taala came before them and they came to know these are the people these who had left you know who had fled who had run away and we were we couldn't find them anywhere and their account was written on some tablet and that was and that was placed in the prayer and that you know tablet was taken out oh yes they are the people and they have been there for 300 years second century of christian era they entered the cave fifth century of christian era they came out is yatanazauna baidahum amrahum it seems that after that allah subhanahu wa taala put them to death they died then and now these people they closed the opening so that it became a collective grave for them that cave now they were fighting each other with each other is yatanazauna baidahum amrahum fa qalu ibnu alayhim bunyana and they said we should erect some you know very big building for them so that people should know who were they but very big saints of allah subhanahu wa taala allah kept them alive 
فار تھری ہنڈریڈ ایئرس فقال الزین قال الزین غلب علام رحیم سو دی پیپل ہو پریویلڈ ان دس افیئر دے ڈسائڈڈ لن تخلن علیہم مسجدا وی شل کنسٹرکٹ ا ماسک ہیئر ٹو ٹو پری ٹو اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی ای میموریل یو سو ای میموریل ٹو دیم ڈیووٹڈ ٹو دیم سیقولون ثلاثه رابعهم قلبهم دے ول سی دیٹ دے ور تھری اینڈ فورتھ واز دیئر ڈاگ وَيَقُولُونَ خَمْسَةٌ سَادِسُهُمْ قَلْبُهُمْ And some people say they were five and sixth was their dog. رَجْمَمْ بِالْغَيْبِ This is conjecturing about the unseen. Guessing the unknown. They don't know. They don't have the knowledge. وَيَقُولُونَ سَمَعَةٌ وَسَامِنُهُمْ قَلْبُهُمْ And some say that they were seven and the eighth was their dog. This style, you know, in between the lines says that actually this is the correct figure. Seven. Sabatun wasaminuhum kalbuhum. And eighth of among them was the dog. Ul Rabbi Alamu Ba'idatihim. But this is not an issue we should be argued about. Say them, my Lord best knows about their number. Ma ya'lamuhum illa qaleel. People don't know them except a few. Fala tumare fihim illa miran zahira. So don't argue with them. Only outward contentions and that's all wala tastaf se fihim minhum ahada and don't ask anybody also about this but this what was necessary to be told to you this was the reality and this is sufficient for you don't try to go into details wala taqulanna li shay'in inni fa'ilun zalika ghada and never say this is very important never say i shall definitely do this thing tomorrow never say this اللہ اللہ always add if Allah wills I intend to do it but I will be able to do it only if Allah permits if there is the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he wills only اللہ یشاء اللہ now these you know these words they represent our culture of monotheism tawheed whenever something good comes to you alhamdulillah you are thirsty You had water to drink, and what you do say? Alhamdulillah. I'll praise be to Allah. You see something which is nice, which is beautiful. The flower, very beautiful flower. What do you say? Subhanallah. You know, seeing everything, but remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see something which pleases you. You will find in the next, you know, section. MashaAllah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed. It's the same way. I shall do this. I intend to do it. Inshallah. I will go. Although the car is ready, I got it serviced, you know, and the tank is full, gas is there, well, I can go. No, no, no. I will not be able to go unless Allah permits. And there is a, a tradition behind this ayah. Actually, when these questions were said to Muhammad Wasallam, these three questions, he thought that Jibreel comes daily. So, this night when he comes, I will ask and tell them. So he said, okay, tomorrow I will give you the answer. Now, Allah disapproved of it. He should not have said this. He should have said, inshallah. So, because this was a mistake. Now, Jibreel is not coming. One day gone, two days gone, three days gone. Now, people are laughing. Finished. Failed. What happened to you? Where is your angel? Where is the wahi? Then when wahi came, this instruction was also, وَلَا تَقُولَنَّ لِشَائِنْ إِنِّي فَعِلُ ذَلِكَ غَدًا إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ Never say for anything that I will do this tomorrow, except if Allah wishes, if Allah permits. وَسْكُرْ رَبَّكَ إِذَا نَسِيتَ And if you forget, And then when you remind yourself and you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then say, وَقُلْ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَهْدِيَ لِرَبِّي لِأَقْرَبَ مِنْ هَذَا رَشَدَىٰ It's possible that my Lord leads me, guides me to something which is better than this. I intend to do this. But maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends something better for me. Why should I decide that I have to do this? I give, leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If He decrees, if He permits, well, okay. 
it will happen. And maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided for me something which is better than this. Asa yadi ani rabbi li akraba min hadha rashada. Wa labisu fi kahfihim salasa mayatin salina wazdadu tis'a. And they remained in their cave for 300 years and some people have added 9 years to them. The explanation of some of the Mufassirin is that they were 300 years, years, 300 years according to the solar calendar. But as for the lunar calendar, in each century three, three years increase. So according to the lunar calendar, it was 309 years. So both figures are correct. وَلَبِسُوا فِي كَافِمْ سَلَا سَمْيَةٍ سِنِينَ And they remained in their, in their cave for 300 years was دَعْدُوا تِسَا And added to it was دَعِي قُلِ اللَّهُ عَالَمُ بِمَا لَبِسُوا Again, this is not very important. Say, my Lord knows best how much they remained, for what period they remained over there. لَهُ غَيْبُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ To Him belongs all the unseen of the heavens and the earth. Absir Behi Vasmeh. How excellent seer he is, and how excellent hearer he is. Maalahum in Dunahim in Waliyin. There is no friend for them, no protector for them except him. Wala Yushriko fi Hukmahi Ahda. And he doesn't make partner anybody in his authority. Lam Yakul Lahu Sharikul Fil Mulk. We have read in the last ayah of Surah Bani Sai. وَلِلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي لَمْ يَتَّخِذْ وَلَدَى وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ شَرِيكٌ فِي الْمُلْكِ There has been no partner with him in kingdom. As a king, he is all-powerful. And here again the same thing. وَلَا يُشْرِكُ فِي حُكْمِهِ أَحَدَى He doesn't include anybody in his authority. وَطْلُ مَا هُيَا إِلَيْكَ مِنْ كِتَابِ رَبِّكِ O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, you recite what has been revealed to you when the from the book of your Lord, لا مبدل لكلماته Nobody can change its words. ولن تجد من دونه ملتحدا And you will not find any refuge except with him. I told you that the great, you know, that was going on, the pressures on Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. And in those circumstances, Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم used to pay more attention to the wealthy people, to the important chiefs that if they accept me, then the Muslims will be strengthened. Our position will, will be strong in, in Mecca. So he used to pay more attention to the wealthy and to the more important elite of Mecca. But there were poor people also. Bilal and, you know, Khabab al arat There were slaves. This hurt them. That Muhammad Wasallam is paying more attention towards them. They are rich. They are chiefs. But not to us. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is instructing Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that you must be, pay, you must pay more attention to your poorer companions. Recite. And this is the source of strength for you and your companions. Whatever has been revealed to you from the book of your Lord, nobody can change its words. And you will not find any refuge except with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاسْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَا الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَرَشِيهِ And content yourself along with those who call upon their Lord mornings and evenings. These fuqara'i sahaba, the companions, the poor people who are calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is praying in the morning also, in the evenings also. وَلَا تَعْيُرِيدُونَ وَجْرَهُ they intend only the face of Allah, that is, His pleasure. They want that Allah be pleased with us. وَلَا تَعْدُ عَيْنَاكَ عَنْهُمْ تُرِيدُ زِينَةَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا And let not your eyes pass beyond them, seeking the pomp and glitter of this world. These, you know, Rausa, and these chieftains, and these rich people, they have all the glitter, and they, you know, seem very important. But you should not pay more attention to them. وَلَا تُطَعِ مَنَا خَلْقَ نَا قَلْبَهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا And don't follow or don't give importance to those whose hearts we have deprived from our remembering. وَالتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ And they are following their wishes and lusts. 
وَكَانَ عَمْرُهُ فُرُطَا And their all affairs are very much extreme. وَقُلِ الْحَقَّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ And you should say to them plainly, This is the truth from your Lord which I am presenting before you. فَمَنْ شَعَفَ الْيُومِنْ وَمَنْ شَعَفَ الْيَكْفُرْ Whosoever wills should believe. Whosoever wills, he should disbelieve. It's your choice. I have only to convey to you. قُلِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ I am not going to request you. No. No, no matter of request. I have before put before you the truth from your Lord. Now it's your choice. فَمَنْ شَعَفَ الْيُومِنْ وَمَنْ شَعَفَ الْيَكْفُرْ Whosoever decides, he can become a moment. He, he, he can he become the believer. Whosoever wants to disbelieve and deny, okay, he is free. But, إِنَّا آتَدْنَا لِلْكَانِ الظَّالِمِينَ نَارًا But for these evil, evil doers, we have prepared a fire. You have the authority. Choice is yours. Go this way or that way. But the result in the hereafter is going to be very different. In the hereafter, we have prepared the fire for them who disbelieve Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who reject Quran. إِنَّا آتَدْنَا لِظَالِمِينَ نَارًا أَحَاتَ بِهِ سُرَادِ قُحَا This nar whose smoke and flames will surround them like the walls and roof of a tent. وَيَسْتَغِيسُوا يُغَاسُوا بِمَا إِنْ كَلْمُهُلْ And if they will aunt and ask for water, they will be given, you know, the molten copper which will burn and roast their mouths. Yes, will wudu mesa sharab, very bad thing to drink. Wasat murtafaka, and very bad place to rest over there. That is this jahannam. Barak Allahu li wa lakum fil Quran al Azim, wa nafani wa yakum bil ayat wa zikr al Hakim. Allah Akbar Allah Akbar The Islamic Organization of North America, Iona, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.